Back again. Back again. Back again. I'm real fucked up today, y'all. It's been a fucked up day, man. I got home around like 3 a.m. this morning. And uh, after getting pulled over by the cop, which was also weird, she was like, she came back to my car and shit and was like, What are you watching? Because I had YouTube playing just to play something while I was driving. And. I'm like, nothing, and I paused it, because I'm just kind of like, what the fuck, like, why was she asking that? And she's like, oh, okay, well, here's your ID, you got any questions for me? She just kind of stood there for me, and I'm like, what the fuck, is this lady, like, either she's trying to hit on me, or she's trying to set me the fuck up. Made me think she hitting on me, so I say some dumb shit, well, she got this body cam on or some shit, I don't know, that shit was just weird, it just, I never had a cop, like, linger like that, you know? I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like the fuck I just got out of court and shit I don't want shit to do with the 5 Honey, bye uh, But I get home And My brother is at home Whatever And my dog is cool Like this nigga seems alright You know, I ain't fucked with him But uh, I start talking to my brother And I'm like Just Telling him about I started trying to tell him about how much of a setup this fucking court shit was. And, he, like, he just keeps trying to, like, quietly talk over me. Like, as I'm talking, he just keeps talking. Like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, and the lawyer did such and such. And he's like, well, you know, sometimes uh, this happens and that happens. Uh, well, you know, you just gotta... Uh. And I noticed that he does that shit to, like, one, try and throw me off track so that I forget what the fuck I'm saying. Or two, to, uh just stop me all together from saying whatever the fuck I'm saying, right? Just so did, like, because I don't know if we've been recorded or what the fuck, but he just always trying to interrupt me and keep me from talking. It's just weird. And I think it's really just to keep me from having, like, conclusive thoughts, to to being able to come to a conclusion that, you know, like, these motherfuckers are all setting me up. Like, in reality, fucking, I don't know. It's just weird. They're weird. My family is the weirdest part because they'll do shit like they gave me like two hundred dollars to help with gas, two hundred, three hundred dollars to help with gas and shit to go to court. And so in my mind, I want to say like, okay, that's not set up shit, right? Like that's that's generous of them to uh, help me out like that. But it still felt like a setup. Like I don't know how to explain. Like my dad picked me up to take me, and I was just like, no, I'm not going with you. I just don't feel comfortable. And so I ended up driving myself, but I feel like a Gillian dialectic. I don't know if y'all know what that is. It's like, uh, what is it? Problem, reaction, solution. And so basically people create a problem and then the way that you react to that problem gives them an opportunity to offer you a solution, which is what they really wanted to do the whole time. So I started thinking like, in reality, these niggas didn't want to drive me to Colorado anyway. They, you know, wanted to send me by myself. But first he had to pick me up and kind of like, because I noticed like we went around the city a little bit. Like we didn't just get up and go on the highway. And he kept saying weird shit to me like, oh, you need to just lay over there and get rest. You need to get rest. How much sleep you get? You got to get some rest. I mean, which doesn't sound creepy, but the way he was saying it was kind of weird. But um, so Hegelian dialectic. So they pick me up, make me feel uncomfortable. Then my reaction is like, oh, I'm just going to drive my fucking self. And thus, you know, they offer the solution like, oh, OK, well, we'll give you a few hundred bucks. Uh, to help you get there and then they don't have to take me right so then i go to court by myself you know with no support system and shit which is like how i've done everything throughout my life like these niggas are never there they never there to have my back you know they don't mind throwing some money at a nigga to make it and i guess that's what i'm getting at it's like they don't mind throwing money at me here and there to make it seem like oh we're your friends oh we got your back but in reality don't be having my fucking back you know what i'm saying like, somebody, uh, I've, I've seen multiple people say in the comments, this way, um, you know, like, beyond titles, like, how much of, of a family is your family? Like, beyond the titles, how, how often do they really help you out, or what do they really do? And, like, beyond money, you know, they'll throw some money in a situation, but then it's always, like, some not having your back-ass shit, you know? So, I don't know, it's weird. But I guess that's how they operate because then how can I come out and completely say like, oh, they're scandalous, like they're shady when they do half-ass have my back, right? 
But uh, one thing that's like really got me fucked up today, and I'm like feeling real fucking alienated and isolated, so I don't even have nobody to really talk to this shit about. But talk to about the shit, but uh, this fucking court shit, man. Like, I really just went down here to close out this case and had to take a plea deal. And, like, the whole court thing seemed fake to me in the first place. Like, I'm the only nigga on the docket somehow. They got these extra lawyers in there. And everybody just seems shady. Like, it just seems fake. And then when it comes time to call my name, literally the only nigga on the docket, all right? And it comes time to call my name. And the judge goes, oh, we're going to take a 10 minute break. And then so we take a 10 minute break and then like my attorney goes to the bathroom, DA goes to the bathroom. They both go like down the same hall together. They probably was down there having fucking sex or fucking communicating telepathically or touching each other's balls. I don't fucking care. Um, DA was a woman, but anyway, <laughs> said touch each other's balls. But, um, and then like, as I'm sitting there, my, my attorney comes back and I'm sitting there looking out the window. He starts talking to me about the mountain range, the Rockies, um, that you can see from the courthouse. And then the DA's coming down the hall. My lawyer goes like, he turns around, looks at her, he's like, I'm like, what the fuck? And you, you smelling her pussy juice on your fucking fingers, nigga? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? And then, so we get in the court or whatever, you know, and I'll, I'll take the plea deal. And, uh, I, I plead guilty to some shit that never happened, my nigga, like, and at first it seemed cool because it's like, okay, I had to pay the lawyer another, you know, 4000 or pay another $8,000 to fucking uh, get this case handled. But fucking didn't want to do that, you know. So I'm thinking, all right, I'll just take the probation and then that'll give me two years to save up money and I can get out the country or whatever. But now I just feel so fucked up because I literally had to say into a microphone, guilty. And the shit that they're trying to charge me with, it, or the, that they convicted me of, or whatever, did not even happen. <laughs> hey, let's go. It didn't even happen. You know, like like one of these ladies is saying that when I tried to leave the hospital, that I grabbed her um, from behind. And, like, I literally have video evidence that I gave to the court and everything that shows her grabbing me. She grabbed me. Here, bud. Come on. Come here. Let's go. Come on. So, like, I don't know. It's just hella fucked up. It's got me very fucked up today. Um, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Because I'm just like, what the fuck? And then another thing, like, I be driving around and notice some weird shit. And it's just, it seems like so much of this shit is orchestrated and set up. Like, how many of us are actually real people? Like, because I, I was recording shit when I was driving around back in uh, Oklahoma. But now, I'm driving around... Missouri and I be seeing some weird ass shit like I just drove up the street and it's these two dudes standing on the fucking corner like they're waiting for the bus right but as soon as I start to pull down the street I notice the old dude puts his hands behind his back like in an X and then the other one puts his hands in his pocket like all at the same time right and so I, I hit the block. I, I go down the street. I'm like, okay, that was weird. But it probably don't mean shit, right? And if it does mean shit, if, if like, for instance, if him putting his hands behind his back in my direction was to point out my direction, like my location or whatever, then if I go around the block and come back a different way, he would have to turn around and change direction to point out my direction, right? So I go and I hit the block and I come back and do actually uh, changed up, bro. Like, like. The dude with, the, with his hands in his pockets literally looks right over at me. And then he grabs his face mask. And he looks at another car. And he grabs his mask. And it's just like, I don't know. It's probably all in my head. But it just, to me, it seemed very orchestrated. It seemed like they were trying to set up street theater. So, you know, and these niggas are just the markers. Like, they just notify. They send the triggers or, like, the the notice, the, the sign to other people to start doing whatever the fuck they're supposed to do. And then the more I'm sitting here looking at these niggas, like, I notice, like, a car to my left starts honking a horn and shit. Like, just to distract me from the fact that I can tell, like, there's some shady shit going on right here, you know? So, I don't know, man. Just trying to get this shit off my chest. Like, I gotta, my brother's off work today, so I don't even know how the fuck this is about to play out because I'm tired of talking to his ass. And I gotta live with him for years. So I don't know how the fuck this is gonna work. I need to, uh, what I'm really thinking about doing is, like, Trying to find somewhere else to live, moving out, and then just Airbnb in my section of the house. Like, put it on Airbnb. 
make a little money off of it enough to pay the rent so I don't have to fucking actually live there but I don't know I feel I feel so fucked up about taking this plea deal because I literally just played guilty to some shit that didn't happen and now what can I do you know now it's like now I got this scarlet letter uh, like of a charge and shit and it's like I don't know, I just feel fucked up, bro. The shit didn't even happen like they saying it happened. Like, I don't know. And it's just weird when you come home and you feel like your whole family setting you up. You feel like everybody's setting you up. Like, where the fuck can a nigga go? Like, I'm about to just go sit in the fucking woods and never be heard from again. You feel me? You know? And I guess that's another thing that's got me fucked up. It's like, now probation is technically taking away my ability to fucking disappear on these motherfuckers. Because that's what I had going for me. It's like, I could easily just slip and slide up out this bitch. And it's kind of weird to me, like, if you really think about it, so I decide, I, you know, determined I was being gang stalked or harassed or whatever the fuck, I go to run off to, like, California, end up in Colorado, and end up in a hospital, and then because I go to a hospital trying to do the right thing and not, like, you know, be out fucking shit up or doing nothing crazy, I think going to hospitals is a safe place to be, I end up getting arrested at this fucking hospital, and then now I'm charged with assault and, like, put on probation so that the place that I was attempting to escape from I'm now stuck here under like restriction by the law for at least two years like that shit's weird that shit's weird it's very coincidental like to run away from a place and then end up in a situation that gets you trapped there (laughs) like what the fuck alright just another day man just another day